and welcome to Media Horse. I'm Jimmy Esco, and today we're taking a look at the 2011 crime drama Max Payne, based upon the popular video game series of the same name. So let's take a walk on the mild side with Wahlberg as I throw this to the round table. So let's just lay it out in advance. Was this movie good? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. I'm gonna go with a solid, GO FUCK YOURSELF! You know, the whole movie started to become tolerable once Wahlberg started tripping balls. Maybe we should have done the same. Are you talking about the last 20 minutes of the goddamn movie? I didn't like it when he started tripping balls. Then again, I loathed it before, so maybe it was just a step up. This is the worst film that I've watched for this group so far. I hadn't played the games prior to watching this film, but I did play some of the first one in order to prepare for this review, and I've got to ask. How do you fuck that up? This is one of those weird scenarios where it's like the perfect shitstorm, where the end result is less than the sum of its parts. You have a decent cast, you have a crappy script that still deserves a better film than this, and you have a stylized approach that could have been appealing in a better movie. You had a number of characters that are complete throwaways. It's rather surprising how badly they wasted some of their actors on big parts. And it's such a waste of their potential. They waste actors like Donald Logue, Olga Kurylenko, and Chris O'Donnell, and Jamie Hector on roles that only have a handful of scenes. Hell, Jamie Hector only showed up long enough to say, Beware of Max Payne. Like he's telling the most boring campfire story ever. Or maybe he's just warning us about the quality of this damn film. Max Payne. <laughs> what? Max Payne, he's been hunting. Three years of kicking down doors. He is looking for something that God wants to stay hidden. And that's what makes him even more dangerous. Mona, stay away from Max Payne. You don't want to be near him when Judgment Day comes. And then he never shows up again. He realized that his name was his name and that it was still worth something. You can't forget about Ludacris! Oh god forbid that we forget about him. He was such a vital part of this film. Yeah, Ludacris plays an internal affairs investigator, which is just... crazy. Mila Kunis... presumably had a point. Well, I thought she was kind of good in this. Jimmy, she's supposed to be Russian. Yeah, never mind. And I didn't even recognize Chris O'Donnell. This is only a year before he joined NCIS Los Angeles. But he looks completely different to me. It's like he pulled some kind of pufferfish maneuver where his body inflated so that no one would recognize that he was in this crap. I thought when watching this movie that it was better than you guys are saying. But I can't come up with a single reason why. I've been there. Don't touch me. That's because... Once you start thinking about it, analyzing it, and trying to make sense of what you saw, there is only one emotional response that makes sense. RAGE! And don't get me wrong, I am not, even for a second, suggesting that this movie is okay if you are willing to turn your brain off, because even if you do that, it's still duller than a hammer made of margarine. Yeah, if you can think of something that you thought was good about this movie, please let me know, because I am at a loss. Uh, they had realistic weapons? You aren't even trying, are you? They had shotguns and pistols! They shot bullets with the impact force of a freight train! Well, to be fair, he never said it was realistic ammo. Thank you. I swear to God. Those guns must have been firing miniature versions of the goddamn Juggernaut because they blasted their way through goddamn anything! 
Like with that scene in the subway where he is simply blasting restroom stalls apart with his pistol? He was literally shooting the shit. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You got too late, but you the day. The physics in this movie made about as much sense as a two-sided box filled with gerbils. You've got to love Max's strategy for avoiding bullet wounds. He blocks the bullets with his torso. A blast from Max's shotgun can launch bad guys like they're the goddamn Discovery, but Max just shrugs that shit off. Let's go back to how they wasted Donald Logue. They practically killed him off screen. Actually, they weren't even that smart. They killed him in a scene consisting almost entirely of seizure cam. Hell, we were joking that he died from being beaten to death by the cameraman. I'm really trying to think of a way that this movie was good. Just admit that it was bad. Holding back is only going to prolong the process. Just let the rage loose and the pain will pass through you. Like a really stupid kidney stone. You know, it feels like a sizable portion of this movie was just Max Payne walking places. It's like he was doing a charity walk and someone just decided to follow him with a camera. In all likelihood, the director thought that the image of Wahlberg walking down an alleyway looked cool and decided that it would be a decent way to pad the rest of the film. And this movie just confuses me. I don't know how you start out with all these individual parts and somehow end up with this at the end. It's equivalent to someone setting out to mix concrete and ending up murdering the firstborn child of every household. Too Jewish. And even though they seem to have completely given up on following the narrative set up by the game, they seem intent on referencing it every step of the way! That's the only conceivable reason that I can think of for the subway scene or the club scenes. And why did they decide to keep his backstory hidden from us until the halfway point? It's almost like they were trying to keep us from liking him. Oh, and they seem to think that it was oh so important to recreate the mechanics of the game with all this gratuitous slow motion. Look, slow motion does have a purpose in film. It allows the audience to understand what is happening when speed or chaotic conditions within the scene would normally prevent them from doing so. But here it seems like they use it whenever Wahlberg moves faster than a walk. Because they spend so much time with him walking that if he suddenly started running, you know, the audience just wouldn't get it! And speaking of odd special effects to use within the shootouts, what the hell was with the Valkyries? It's like the people decided that it wasn't being symbolic enough, so it's shoved in these odd hallucinations that show up when people die. Do you get that it's King Lear? Or when Max Payne takes a crap in the middle of an office. It's actually kind of fun to imagine how that must have looked without the addition of special effects. That being said, the visual effects were decent and would have looked good in some other film. But here they just helped in illustrating how dull the whole experience was. Cora, you could tell me. Was everything in the game gray? Pretty much. It had a pretty muted noir palette. I played the game too, and it was pretty gray. Though, I don't know why they even bothered to keep the noir setting. It is a radically different entity from the game, and most of the shots that we see are just of Max Payne walking. Maybe it's to evoke a sense of nostalgia. For what? Oh, people in the movies these days, they just don't walk like they used to. These days, they actually focus on, you know, getting somewhere. And this movie seems to think that it's so serious despite the fact that everybody acts like an odd caricature of a human being. At one point, Max is walking through the office and everyone starts standing up as if in shock. It couldn't have been sillier if someone said, Miss Jean Louise, stand up! Max Payne is passing. Yeah, everyone stood up like he had spontaneously given them all hemorrhoids. The plot of this movie really does revolve around setting up set pieces. The problem is that there isn't actually much there to connect them, and the shootouts themselves rarely elevate themselves above being anything but horrible. And why is he in the cold case division instead of the DEA? That's a change that made no sense for the plot. In the game, the reason the cops turned on him so readily was because most of them didn't even know he was a cop. I mean, 
I watched this movie at a later point than you guys did, and I walked away from it thinking it was passable, but then you guys talked about it. And you made me think. This movie tricked me into thinking it was a complete crap. You simultaneously defended and condemned this film more than anyone else. I actually had a similar experience when I watched this movie. I thought I was just tired and I wasn't getting it. In hindsight, I don't think I could have missed anything even if I tried to, considering the fact that they slow everything down for you. Actually, I want to go back to that for a second, because we haven't even mentioned the worst scene. Remember that weird limbo maneuver he pulled in the drug lab? Oh, we remember. The entire lab shootout may have been a raging torrent of dick, but we aren't going to forget that little nugget of idiocy. It wasn't just the slow motion that killed that scene. It was also the editing and the framing of it. Because what he's doing is leaning back to shoot at a guy who is on a catwalk behind him. That's moronic enough to begin with, but the editing was so bad that we thought there was more than one guy on the catwalk. And let's not forget the manner in which the henchmen charge into the room. They don't stop to pinpoint their target. No, they just shoot everything. Including their drugs and equipment. They shoot everything except him. And then start walking around the lab dumbly, just waiting for him to pull his stupid shotgun peekaboo maneuver. Seriously, I never thought the war on drugs would be waged by drug dealers! You can't even call this movie a war. Why is that? Wars end! That's right! They had the call to goddamn sequel bait us! Oh, and let's not forget our villain, BB. Oh, s sorry. Spoiler. The villain is the guy who is obviously the villain. I haven't even beaten the game, but I know that BB is just a mini-boss. Presumably because the game's creators thought that having an arch-villain named BB was completely moronic. Hell, the game even makes fun of his name. But yeah, they wanted to save the proper villain for the sequel! The idea that the creators actually thought that this movie would warrant a sequel makes my head want to explode like it was shot by... Actually, I guess a Derringer would probably be sufficient to do the job, considering how guns work in this movie. This is the worst movie that I've watched for Media Horse so far. This movie? Bad. There's no tap dancing around it, in part because that would require characters moving faster than a walk. The plot is deceptively bad. Physics and logic apparently pulled a Thelma and Louise in with this movie. The cinematography and framing are actually some of the worst you'll find this side of Battlefield Earth. The flashback is arguably the only good scene in the movie, and it only shows up midway. The fact that it is deceptively bad is actually one of the few things that I respect about this film. If you don't think about it, you can probably avoid being pissed about it. That being said, it's so bad, and I'd never recommend anyone to see this. This is a you should be ashamed for me. That's 4 out of 10. This movie is so flimsily strung together and horribly executed that I really cannot understand how it reached theaters in this form. The noir styling, while impressive on its own, only serves to further illustrate the blandness of what's occurring on screen. Mark Wahlberg went through the entire movie conveying only one emotion, and that emotion was NyQuil. There was only one point where he seemed to actually give a shit, and that was when it actually looked like he was taking one. There are very few negative comments that cannot be applied to the action scenes. The hallucination comes the fuck out of nowhere, and we're just expected to believe that everyone who takes the drug hallucinates the same thing. And then, to end this movie with sequel bait is like rubbing arsenic into the wound. There is nothing redeeming about this movie. Why have you forsaken me? That's 2 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, I've done a lot of different types of wrap-ups. I've been angry, gleeful, and even stupid about films before. But this just leaves me depressed. I don't know what I should feel about this movie. I'm not even in turmoil over whether or not it was bad, but rather how bad it was. No one was used to their full potential in this movie. I've seen snails covered with salt that could outpace this movie.
the handguns in this movie qualify as WMDs. And I'm not even going to approach the subject of movie physics because I don't have the energy necessary. And hallucinations. Fun fact, kids. They're based on individual psyche. I don't care what you take. You're not going to see the same thing as your best friend unless he described it to you beforehand. This is 3 out of 10 for me. Turd Blossom. I don't like this movie. It's not that I hate it. It's that I really hate it. I'll agree that at first this movie didn't seem that bad, but it's like a tumor where it just slowly grows and eats away at you. There are some movies that you love to hate, but this isn't one of them. At the end of the day, you're just drained and depressed. The degree of incompetency present in this production is just staggering. I really cannot understand how you screw this up this badly. This is like the Bay of Pigs of movies. The Michael Bay of Pigs, if you will. The very fact that I actually bothered to sit through this just pisses me off. This is a why have you forsaken me. That's two out of ten. Well, with two why have you forsaken me ratings, one turd blossom, and one you should be ashamed, the average media horde rating is... Turd blossom. So, I'm gonna pop some painkillers and see how low I can go. Pain style. This is where it starts. Where it will end. This is where it starts. <laughs> you angry is funny. <laughs>